Stop writing your own camera follow scripts. I've made countless games and for each one I've made their own camera scripts. That is until I used Cinemachine. This tool is literally designed to achieve camera movement with the least amount of code possible because it is entirely used through the inspector itself. The only setup is go to Window, Package Manager and under Unity Registry at the top, scroll down and go to Cinemachine and click Install. Once you've done this, go to the hierarchy, right click, Cinemachine and go to 2D Camera and you'll see that Virtual Camera will pop up and on your main camera, if you scroll down, you'll have the Cinemachine brain now attached to your camera. So the neat thing is if I select my virtual camera and I move it, you can see the camera actually moves itself. And if I try to move the camera, I can't because it is now linked to the virtual camera. So let's get this set up. I've got my player down here and I want that to be the center. I'm going to get my player and I'm going to drag it into the follow section. Now the player is in the middle. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by decreasing the orthographic size. And if you drop down to lens, you can see there's the near clip plane. So if you don't see anything, just bring it to a negative value and the far clip plane as well. And you've got your Dutch angle here. So I'm going to click play and you can see that it follows the player just fine. So for 2D, we're just going to look at two things. One is the body and the other are extensions and I'll get to both. So first of all, for the body, you've got two options. You have hard lock to target and framing transposure. So I'm going to click hard lock to target and let's see what it does. I click play and you can see it hard locks the player. There's damping here. Let's increase the damping and now it slowly moves to the player. I'm going to show you the better one, which is framing transposure. Let's have a look. So you can see that this pops up straight away. And if you don't see it, you can click game window guides. First thing I'll show you is damping. You can increase the X damping and then that only increases the damping on the X and you've got the Y damping as well. So you have that full control there. The next thing is the look ahead time. If I were to bring that to one, you can see that whenever I move, I look ahead to where I'm moving, but this is quite jittery. So I'm going to add some smoothing to it. And now it slowly looks ahead and I can decrease this a little bit more. And now that's a bit better. So if I turn this off, go full screen, then you can see that I am always looking in the direction that I'm moving. I'm going to turn this off for now. And then you've got screen X, screen Y, and this just gives an offset to your screen. I'm going to leave that in the middle. You have your camera distance that's set to 10. If I bring that up to like 42, you can see that the Z is now negative 42. So I'm going to bring that down to 10. So it goes back down again. The next important thing are dead zones. So I'm going to increase the width and the height of the dead zone. Now, whenever the player is in the middle of this box, nothing happens. But the moment they move outside, then the camera starts to move. So if I were to turn this off and let's start moving, you can see the camera doesn't move. And then when I move to the edges, it's only at that point that the camera starts moving. And then the last thing is the soft zones. So I can bring these a little bit smaller. So this just means that the player cannot exit these zones. So if I were to go up, you can see, look at the yellow dot. It can never leave that zone. So this is especially useful, of course, when your player is exploring like this. Or well, if you're making a platformer and the player is falling, then you can clamp the camera position so it doesn't go off screen. And let's just go down to here. We have noise. So this is where you can add camera shake, but this is only for constant camera shake. So I'm going to add basic and the noise profile. Let's do a 60 shake. You can increase the amplitude and you can increase the frequency as well. So I can also make this a wobble to make it more wobbly. 60 shake is more of a position based shake and then wobble is more of a rotation based shake. I'll get back to how to trigger this shake on demand. But the very last thing I want to show you is confining the camera to specific bounds. And this is really useful. All you've got to do is go to extensions and you've got a few things here that are only used for 2D. And one of them is Cinemachine Confiner 2D. I'm going to select that. When I open this up, you can see that it requires a Collider 2D. So I'm going to create a Polygon Collider and let's edit the shape a bit and I'm going to make it a trigger as well so it doesn't affect physics. So I'm going to go back to my virtual camera and drag in the Area Collider. So if your area is big enough where you can fit the camera inside, it creates this little box in here and that box is the only place that the camera can go. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that the entire camera can actually fit inside. And I'm gonna go invalidate cache to recalculate it. And now this box that the camera can fit in is a lot bigger now. Of course, if you want to manually do this box, you just go and click oversize window 
and then drag this to where you want the box size. And for example, if you've got the Aero Collider and you simply don't want the center of the camera to go across the bounds here, then let's go virtual camera and make the window size like really small, like 0.01. And let's get our area collider and let's shrink it a little bit. So I'm gonna make it so the camera can only be inside this little gap here. Let's go back and validate cache. Now you can see when I move, you've got the camera and the only place that it can be is inside this little bound here. I actually used this in Uproot where it made the collider procedurally for each level depending on its size. So now the very last thing is camera shake. How do you trigger camera shake in Cinemachine? So I'll show you exactly that. But before we get into that, I have something I want to talk to you about. And I guess what it is? What? Who are you? I am the sponsorship pirate. Okay, okay, you can guess what it is. Is it Light Flicker Ultimate? Yeah, how did you know? Light Flicker Ultimate allows you to create any type of light flicker entirely from the Unity Expector itself. Here's an example. So if I watch over here, you can see I've got these runes and they're going from red to blue. And what is powering them? It's Light Flicker Ultimate. And this is it. You can create all the flickers from the Inspector itself. This is how easy it is to change it. So this has an intensity between zero and 10, and that is what's creating the flicker. It's creating the flicker every 0.1 and 0.2 seconds, and it's doing it to red color. I can add a transition speed of like 0.1, and now it slowly transitions between each flicker. I can even add different colors. So I'm gonna make it so it's between red and blue, and let's chuck that in. And now it picks a random color on the spectrum. And of course I can easily add more states if I were to add the plus button. So now I've got it from red to blue to green. If I open up the menu, you can see what's going on. It's going state one, state two, state zero, state one, state two, state zero. And this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with this asset. If you want to see all the features, you can check it out on the Unity Asset Store. So to do Camera Shake, you need two things. You need a Cinemachine Impulse Source, and you need a Cinemachine Impulse Listener, which you can get by doing the extensions. So let's click play and see how it works. If I click Invoke, you can see that there's a bit of Camera Shake already. So you've got the source, and that triggers the Camera Shake, and you've got the Listener. But here is the key difference between the two. The source is predictable. It passes through a predictable pattern and it does that same pattern every single time and then the listener listens to that and it does that pattern and then you can add some noise on top of that and that's where you get the randomness. So this might be a lot to take in so let's just walk through what this is here. You have the impulse shape and over time that is the amount of force put onto the camera shake. Currently it's onto pump if I put it to explosion you can see it starts off really high and then it dissipates. If I put it onto rumble then it slowly builds up and then it stops and then let's increase the amount of seconds it does it for. There we go, now it's very obvious. You got recall, well, it starts really high and then it goes down low. And the important one is your target velocity. This just means that it starts negative on the Y. If I put this on the X, like negative 10, then it's going to start on the left hand side of the screen. And of course I can bring the Y to something really high and now it's in the top left hand side of the screen. So already we know that we need to randomize these two values to start at a random position each time. Now we've got our listener. So how does this work? First of all, we want to add noise at the very end and what type of noise? Let's add some 60 shake and let's just make it really intense to make it really obvious. And let's click invoke and now you can see there is loads of random shake going on there. That's what I mean by this is predictable and then this is randomized. So we gotta make a script that basically triggers this invoke for us. So to do that, I'm going to add a component and I'm going to add a new camera shake script. And then the other thing is we need to know what values we're passing. So I am going to create another script and I'm going to make this the scriptable object that will pass into our camera shake. Let's go over the scriptable object first and what we need for it. All right, so I've just given it a quick setup here. So let's go back and what's the first thing we need is we need to be able to select what type of noise we want. Do we want a shake? Do we want a wobble? Do we want a handheld? What type of shake? And we can find this under something called noise settings property. And I'm going to make this public of a noise settings and make it a shake type. If we don't put this in here, then it won't show up in the inspector. So I'm going to right click, create and make my own profile. Now, if I go down here, you can see that I've got my shake type. Now, the next thing we need is the amplitude, the frequency and the duration. 
So I'm going to put all those things in here as floats. And then the last thing we need is the curve. How do you want the camera shake to actually play out? So I am going to add an animation curve into here. And I'm going to make the default a ease in out with these values here. So making it a default like this, I'll show you what it looks like in the inspector. Let's go to our new profile and that's what it looks like. It starts off really intense and then it slowly decreases over time. So now we've got all our values that we need for a camera shake. So now we just need to plug those into our virtual camera and make them shake. Da, 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 da. All right, so let's go back to our camera shake script. And this is the one that we attach to the virtual camera itself. So this is what's going to trigger the camera shake. So the very first thing we should do is we should make sure the right components are on. So we need a virtual camera, an impulse source, and an impulse listener whenever we do camera shake. So I'm gonna use require component to make sure all those things are required on the game object. Next, I want to get the listener and get the source. And then once we've done that, I'm going to get them in the start method. And also we want to call camera shake from anywhere. So I'm gonna make this entire thing static. All right, I'm gonna delete update because we don't need it. And then let's create our shake method. So when we call this, it is simply going to send a shake to the listener, which will then send it to the source and it will shake it. So when we shake, what do we need? Well, we need a duration, an amplitude, a frequency, what type of shake we're doing, whether it's a 60 shake, a 60 wobble or a handheld. And what is the impulse shape? Whether it was like recoil or rumble, one of those ones. And I'm going to set all these to have default values. Right, so we got that in and then I'll make one more method also called shake but instead it takes in a camera shake scriptable object and that is the one that we created here that also has all of these things attached to it. Sweet so you can either call shake and send in the scriptable object or you can just call shake directly. So now let's link everything to everything else. So first of all I'm going to link all these things to the listener and what is the listener? Well, that is this thing right here. So as I've put everything in here, I have made the listener's amplitude to match the amplitude we'll send through. I've made the frequency match the frequency and I've put the duration to zero and I'll explain why in a sec. And then if the shake type exists and what is the shake type? Uh, this is the shape type when we select the type. If there is one that we send through, then we make it the shape type. If not, then we make it the default shape. And if you look at the top, I have just made a simple variable called default shake. So if I save and go back to our camera shake, you can see that the default shake is here. I'm going to set the default shake to 60 shake. The reason why I put this in is this is the only way that I found that you can actually change this variable at all. And that is through the inspector. Like I cannot change it via code. I've tried. So the reason why we set it to zero and that is setting this number to zero is I found that this is actually the accurate way of doing camera shake time. And this duration is actually a little bit inaccurate when you add some duration here, some duration here, uh, then it's a very unpredictable amount of time. So set that to zero and then set that to your duration. Sweet, so that's all the listener. Now let's get into the source. All right, that's everything. So we are changing the source. So this is the source right here. And we are making the duration, the duration. So this changes the seconds up here to match the duration. We are setting the shape to be custom. And here we are setting this to be custom. So that's all right. And then we are setting the shape to be impulse shape. So we're just setting the shape here to be the shape that we send through. And if we don't send through a shape, it will just do that animation curve is out graph that I showed before. And that graph looks like this. And it sets it to this by default if you don't pass it through. And lastly, we get the default velocity and we make it a random value inside a unit circle. And what do I mean by that? This is the default velocity here. And so it picks a random number inside of unit circle. The maximum can be is like one zero or one zero or anything in between. So it could be like for that value, for example. Now, the very last thing we need to do is we need to trigger the actual shape. So I'm going to go source dot generate impulse with force. And then we pass in a global force. And I'm going to add one more variable up here named global force and now that is everything that we need to do our camera shake and let's give it a go so if i go to my player character here 
I've got my top down character controller script. So here at the top, I am going to add a camera shake SO. And then when we collide with something, I am going to make it shake pretty much. And of course I need to go dot instance dot shake. By the way, this is everything that I use for the camera movement. And the reason why it's so simple is because I am using one of my free plugins called Animator Coder. So you can check that out if you don't want to use the Unity Animator and you just want to do everything through code. There we go. Now I've got Shake. I'm going to drag in my new profile in there. And I'm going to get my Shake. Let's do a 60 Shake. Amplitude 1, Frequency 1, Duration 1. So here I'm going to get my Global Force, set it to 1. And let's run into a wall. And there we go, we have some sort of shape. Let's tweak this to make it better. Let's increase the frequency a little bit. There we go, now it wobbles a little bit further. Let's keep on running into walls, increase the amplitude a little bit. And there we go, now we're getting some really cool camera shake. I change this to wobble. Oh yeah, look at this. <laughs> It wobbles the entire screen. There we go. Now we have got some pretty cool camera shake going on. The great thing about Cinema Machine is it looks very natural. Last thing I'll add is if you want to support me and my projects, and so I can keep on creating these tools and videos for you all, you can support me on my Buy Me A Coffee page. There I've put up supporter memberships and also a shop where you can get these really neat Unity tools. But if you want to see how to add sound into your Unity projects, I will check out this video next.